Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Praise the Lord and welcome to this morning devotion, Sunday, 18th October 2020. Please get your daily fountain, the Church of Nigeria devotional, as we go in to seek the face of God as we begin the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this day and this new week. As we come before you, Lord, set us on our path, enable us to hear you, that the rest of this day and of course this new week, we may walk in the light of your word. Thank you, Lord, as you glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Our text for meditation today is Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. And it reads, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of God. Our topic for meditation is live in the spirit and not in the flesh. Live in the spirit and not in the flesh. The spirit of God is given to us as a guarantee that God means everything he has told us. The Spirit of God, we are told, is given to us, given to every believer in Christ Jesus. Because we have been born of the Spirit. Therefore, we have the Spirit of God and it is a guarantee that whatever God has told us is true. If someone rep represents a guarantee for a pledge, it is taken as done, even in human affairs. So the guarantee God has given us as believers is his own very spirit. And when we become Christians and receive the spirit, we are expected to live by that spirit and no more according to the flesh. The Bible says in John chapter 3, that he that is born of the spirit is spirit, and he that is born of flesh is flesh. When we are born of the spirit, we become spirit because we have the spirit of God in our lives. It will negate our profession, therefore, if after being born again, we continue to live by the flesh. Living by the flesh means doing things according to the desires of the flesh. Allowing the flesh to rule your thoughts, rule your actions, rule your words. At the end of the day, you live a carnal life and not a life directed by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God occupies a very important place in our relationship with God. There is nothing we can do without the Spirit of God. The ability to subdue the flesh 
and make it to please God comes from the Spirit. We have so many people who say they don't want to be Christians, but they know they're morally upright. It's really not possible. Because every human being born in the flesh was born a, in bondage to sin, to the desires of the flesh. So no one can actually please God without the help of the Spirit of God. That is why God gave us that Spirit. No man who does not have the Spirit of God will be able to stand against the wise of the devil. Not only are we at war against our own flesh, against the forces of the world, we are also at war against the devil, the forces of darkness. And no man in his own power in the flesh can withstand the manipulations of Satan. Therefore, we need the Spirit of God. And having received it, if you are a Christian, we should live by that Spirit so that it can rule our lives. It is meant to lead us. It is meant to direct us. It is meant to direct the way we live our lives. We are told in Luke chapter 4 that Jesus, being filled with the Spirit, was led into the wilderness by the same Spirit. You see, Jesus was filled with the Spirit. Jesus was led by the Spirit. Therefore, when he was tempted in the wilderness, by the help of that same Spirit, he overcame using the Word of God. We as Christians, the moment we are not led by the Spirit, we will go to places God wouldn't want us to go. We will say things God wouldn't want us to say. And then when we fall into temptation, saying and doing those things, there will be no strength to overcome. Therefore, Jesus being a good example has shown us that even where he was tempted, it was the spirit that led him there, not his flesh. The flesh is weak with evil tendencies, and we must know that very well. There's no level of spirituality you get to that your flesh becomes strong. No, the flesh will always be weak. So if you put too much confidence in your flesh, you will disappoint God and disappoint yourself. So the flesh is weak with evil tendencies. And any Christian who allows the flesh to take upper hand in his life will come to frustration. You will not grow. You will not do what you want to do. Apostle Paul said, the things I want to do, I do not. But the things I do not want to do, those things I find myself doing. Those were his experiences in the days when the flesh had upper hand. But when the spirit took over, his confession changed. To glory be to God through Jesus Christ who has given us the victory. Every believer can experience that victory and power over the flesh if we submit to the purging power of the word of God through his spirit. If we can submit to the purging power of the word of God through the spirit of God, we will experience that power to live fruitful Christian lives. That power to live above the flesh, that power to be able to listen to the Holy Spirit. But how much of the Word of God do you have in your heart? How much do you feed on the Word? What takes your time during the day and during the night? Do you spend most of your time on pleasure, on reading books that do not edify? What do you spend your time on? If you can spend your time on the word of God, the purging, sanctifying power of that word by the spirit of God will grant you power to overcome the flesh. It is at that stage that we can have this witness within our hearts that we are truly children of God. For the Bible says that they that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Are you led by the Spirit of God or 
you just claim that you are led. Are you actually led? Do you argue with the Spirit of God when you are being given instruction? When you are being cautioned and prompted, do you respond swiftly? Or you relapse into laziness? And before you know it, that prompting disappears. Then you are disobeying the Holy Spirit and He will not continue to force you. The Spirit of God strengthens our hearts and helps us in our resolution in the midst of sufferings because of our faith. When challenges come because of what we believe and you are not well connected to the Spirit of God, you will easily lose hope. You will easily give up. But if you are connected to the Spirit of God, the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. That joy will sustain you through the times of trial. But if you fall to the desires of the flesh, if you begin to live your life according to the dictates of the flesh, you will fall into sin, you will wound that spirit, and if he leaves you, the joy of the Lord will also leave you. And in place of joy, there will be sorrow. There will be frustration. There will be no joy in running the race. In fact, when you pray, it will be like you are forcing yourself to pray. When you read the Bible, it will look like you are forcing yourself to read the Bible. Because the Spirit is absent. When the Spirit is there, prayer is a pleasure. Reading the Bible is a pleasure. And the more you pray, the more you want to pray. I urge you and urge everyone connected to this hour to please allow the Spirit of God have its way in your life. If we must share in the glory that will be revealed when Jesus comes, we must allow the Spirit of God in us to subdue the nudging of the flesh. We must allow the Spirit of God in us to subdue the desires of the flesh. We are told in Galatians to walk in the Spirit so that we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is against the Spirit and the spirit desires what is against the flesh. The two are at war within us. So that we end up doing what we do not want to do. There is nobody who doesn't want to be a child of God. There is nobody who doesn't want to go to heaven. There is nobody who doesn't want to live a holy life. Even a smoker wants to be free. The prostitute wants to be free. The drug addict in his right senses will, be, will be desire to be free. But how many are willing to yield to the process of true freedom? The Bible says, if you know the truth and accept the truth, the truth will set you free. That truth is what God is presenting to us this morning. We need to live by the Spirit and not according to the flesh. Our prayer for this morning is, Lord, May the power of the Holy Spirit manifest greatly in my Christian life. That is our prayer this morning. But as you say that prayer, are you saying it with your whole heart? If you can say it with your whole heart, God is very willing to respond faster than you can imagine. Let us not be saying I'm a child of God, whereas God doesn't know us. He knows us when we bear the mark of his spirit. As we pray, you take this song with me. I know my God. I know my God. I know my God. My God knows me. 
I know my God. I know my God. I know my God. My God knows me. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for as many as have joined in this devotion today. We pray that the cause your word spoken to us to abide with us. Let not the enemy snatch it from our hearts. Let this word bear fruit, so much so that your spirit may dwell in us and have full expression through us. Possess our thoughts, possess our words, and direct our actions that we may live in the spirit that we may live to please you, that at the end of the ages we will share in your eternal glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. May the Lord bless the day ahead of us and the week ahead of us. God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. To alert the sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.